Welcome back to the Vandy Sports Podcast presented by The Wash House. I'm Joey Dwyer and Mark Byington has his first roster edition, his first transfer portal commitment. And it's one that he's pretty familiar with. Uh, Jalen Carey, former James Madison forward, 6'8 forward, was a freshman this year, uh, is now a Vanderbilt Commodore. And I think it's a nice gift for Mark Byington and one obviously he's pretty familiar with. He's talked in the past about how Carey's kind of a guy that's good for his locker room and I think Carey kind of personifies what Byington wants and one of his players he's physical he's tough and it seems like he's a guy who I mean he talked to the media a lot last year as a freshman uh, and it feels like a guy that I think Byington kind of believes in and I don't think he takes him this early in the process if he doesn't uh, was really efficient from two-point range in particular but the field in general 66.9 percent shooter from the field this year I think is really physical like I mentioned his rebounding ability I think is really something to, that he can hang his hat on he averages 4.3 a game uh, I think one and a half on the offensive glass per game so it's a guy who does a, a lot of really good things for them and I think would continue to do that for Vanderbilt next year the question I have is how does the size translate and obviously he was a seven point scorer last year in the Sun Belt so how does it translate to the SEC I don't know I don't know that he's a guy who's going to come in and give you big numbers or anything, but I think he's kind of a program build kind of guy, if that makes sense. And I think Stack had a few of those and Byington's going to have one here. And I think it's a guy who has a lot of upside. He comes from a family of obviously his dad uh, played in Miami. I think maybe played in the NBA as well. Uh, then his brother, Vernon Carey, played at Duke, was a one and done, uh, and then played for the Hornets, was drafted the 32nd overall in 2020. So obviously good genes there. And feels like he has a bit of an understanding of what he needs to do and what his role was on that team. It felt like he played that really well. He played about 15 minutes a game, uh, scored it a little bit, average seven a game, and had games where it was more than that. I think he scored 16 against Coastal Carolina, 13 against Arkansas State in the uh, Sun Belt Championship on six or seven shooting. But also, you look at the games like Duke and Wisconsin where he struggled a little bit. Uh, so I think it's, it's going to be tough for him to go up a level but I do think he has tools that can help him to do that. Uh, obviously, again, really efficient from the field last year. I think the physicality really stands out. And I think it's not even just physicality, it's also body control. If you see him handle the ball, you would not think that it's a 6'8 kind of post-up guy. There's a lot of his post game is predicated on half spins and full spins. It's a guy who does a lot of really nice things off the bounce, surprisingly, from time to time. And I think... What really surprised me, because I had watched him a little bit at James Madison, but looking more into him, he only shot 20 on the year, but it feels like his stroke from three-point range is a lot smoother and a lot more repeatable than I had really thought. And again, that goes back to body control. It feels like there's a potential here for him to play the four, and I think that's probably a lot of the reason that Byington brought him with is because he can be a four, but he can also be a five. I think he's probably going to have to play mostly the four, at this level, though, I think he was able to play a lot more five at the Sun Belt type of level. But, man, he's done some really nice things as a freshman. And, again, I think Byington really believes in what he has there. And it's not like he has to come in next year and be a guy who's a bell cow guy. He's got three years of eligibility left. He's essentially, well, I guess he is technically going to be a sophomore. So he's going to come in and he's going to have time to develop. Hopefully they're going to have some guys who can kind of take some pressure off him, some older guys. I think Van Allen Lubin. If they can hold on to him is a guy that kind of fit that profile. And that's why I have optimism that the frame necessi won't necessarily be a huge hang-up with him being only 6'8". Because you saw what Ben Allen Lubin did. He played the five. And I think Lubin is better. I think Lubin's more well-rounded than Carey. Carey's definitely more physical, though. And I think he's probably a better rebounder than Lubin is. Although Lubin had a few really nice games on the glass. But I think that's kind of the blueprint you look at and say, well, I guess he can play the five. You don't really want him to play the five, though. And I think he almost shoots it better than, at least his stroke is a little cleaner than Lubin's is uh, shooting it. His free throw shooting was not great. I think he shot 70 free throws on the year at 51% or something along those lines. He got to the line a lot for the amount of minutes he played. Again, testament to his physicality. When they have him go off a pick and roll and he's rolling towards the basket, I don't know that you really ever want to get in front of him. Has He's a really explosive finisher around the rim. Again, some of that kind of surprised me. I think he's a good all-around player and he's not a great shot blocker I don't know that he's an awesome defender I do think he has some mobility and obviously the physicality will help him but I think there's something in there he just kind of strikes me as a guy who's going to be a role player this year 
and maybe next year. And I don't know that he's ever a star at this level, but I think he's going to do a lot of things that Mark Byington wants his program to be about early on. And it's going to help to have a guy who's been in the program and hopefully for Vanderbilt, he'll have one or two more. I think Edwards is the one that you really want to watch. But uh, it was interesting. Byington hinted yesterday that he wanted, uh, or he was asked about James Madison. He said, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, some of them came and, well, there's one the next day. So it's an interesting gift for Vanderbilt. And again, he talked a lot about yesterday at the intro presser, wanting toughness and physicality and all these things he wanted his program to be about. And it feels like this is the type of guy that um, you bring in if you want to actually personify those values. And I think Byington has really done a nice job with that in this case where this is a guy that's kind of an example of what made that James Madison program successful. Obviously, he was only a freshman, wasn't a huge contributor for him. And I guess he was a contributor to an extent, but wasn't one of their main guys that you would you'd think. It's not Bickerstaff, he's not Edwards. But I do think he did a lot of things that Byington likes and Byington wants his team to be about. And I think that's really what you look at here and think uh, and say, well, this is a nice get for them. As for the roster next year, I think his role really depends on what their roster next year is going to look like. Is it going to be a Colin Smith, Val, and Lubin front court? I don't think he's better than either of those guys. Do they get a transfer uh, in the front court? Who knows? I think even Terrence Edwards, if they can get their hands on him, the old James Madison forward, whoever's 17 a game, then he's probably playing a lot more for and limiting the minutes there. Does J.Q. Roberts come back? I think Carey's pretty – Carey's probably a better player than him. Does Carter Lang eat some of those minutes? I don't know. But I think Vanderbilt's got a chance here to um, have Carey be a program-type player and a guy who can pay dividends down the line for him. So nice get for them. Is it going to be a world-changing get? No, but I think it's the type of get that you want to have this early in a coaching tenure, and Byington did that. And – uh, he has really, I think, won over the fan base the last two days, and this certainly has helped him out. So we'll have coverage of uh, whatever Byington does this offseason and what this program is about and uh, shaping up to be as we head into the season. But for now, thank you guys for watching. God bless. Thank you to the Wash House. We'll talk soon. Peace.